So I would like to start with the most common symptoms of bladder cancer, which are blood in the urine, recurrent urinary infections, frequency of urination, urgency or pain on passing urine when no infection is found on the urine tests by your doctor. So it is very important that if any of these symptoms happen, you see your doctor that will organize some tests and then refer you to the specialist for further investigations. So the specialist from a urology team that will involve either a doctor or a specialist nurse will organize a couple of tests meaning a CT scan, which is a detailed scan of the urinary system that will tell us if there's anything abnormal in the kidneys or bladder, as well as a flexible cystoscopy. This is a telescopic examination of your bladder that is almost always required and allows us to see the inside of your water pipe, your urethra, as well as the bladder and tell us about any abnormal growth in the lining of the system there. So as soon as a diagnosis provisionally is made through these tests, then treatment starts quickly and time is important matter in the management of bladder cancer with the principal treatment of bladder cancer, which is the transurethral resection of bladder tumor, so-called TURBT. It's the first treatment that most patients will get after the provisional diagnosis, and it's a small operation with no scars in your tummy that with a telescope, we remove the cancerous growth and also seal the tissue around where the growth was in the bladder. So that will give us the necessary information to understand the extent of your cancer. And in patients that the disease is caught in an early stage, it might be the only treatment option. So this is important to understand that the treatment for bladder cancer depends very much upon the cell type, the grade, and the stage of the cancer. So in essence, what we mean is how aggressive are the cancer cells looking under the microscope? How, uh, what is the cell type? And the cell type can be, in most of the cases, transitional cell. And this is uh, in about 90% of all new bladder cancers diagnosed. But sometimes other cancer types, so-called variants, may develop within the bladder, which are mostly rare and unfortunately related to a worse prognosis. And the stage of the cancer indicates the extent of the cancer within the bladder and possibly elsewhere in the body. So the two major questions we have to answer is if the bladder cancer is developing within the lining of the bladder and therefore called non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, which is the way that the bladder cancer appears in around 8% of the patients, and or the muscle invasive bladder cancer, where the cancer is a bit more aggressive, has gone through the muscle wall of the bladder or even further out than that, and this affects around 20% of the patients appearing with bladder cancer. So the most common treatment for bladder cancer is uh, a diagnostic and treatment procedure called transurethral resection of bladder tumor, which is the surgery to remove the cancer from the bladder lining. It is quite common happens with a camera procedure within the water pipe and the bladder and has to be performed by a specialist surgeon that will ensure the best possible chances that the tumor resection will be as complete as possible. The surgeon will also be able to make a clinical assessment of the extent, the aggressiveness and the stage of the tumor, the possible need for radical surgery, and alongside the anesthetist, they will decide the feasibility of possible radical surgery. So the treatment happens usually as a day case in the hospital, and the patient will be able to go home later without or with a catheter. And in some cases, we might have the patient having a direct chemotherapy in the bladder just after surgery, 
in order to prevent the tumor from coming back or being, or sorry, or progressing in the future. The latest refinements for the treatment of bladder cancer surgery that developed over the last few years uh, can be summarized in three aspects. The first is the unblock resection of bladder tumors, which means the removal in total of the tumor in one go, that has the benefits of better histology samples, less surgical complications, and better oncological outcomes. The second is improvements in visual detection that technology has allowed us to help the use, sorry, the diagnosis of bladder cancer that enhance our detection capacity for both primary, but also, and most importantly, recurrent tumors. And last but not least, the minimally invasive robotic surgery in combination with enhanced recovery protocols revolutionized one of the most complex surgical operations in urology, improving patients' experiencing, minimizing surgical stress and shortening hospital stay as well as minimizing complication rates. These all result in better functional, but also translate in better cancer outcomes for these patients. So bladder cancer survival in the UK has increased significantly in the last 40 years. Of course, survival depends on many factors and no one can tell you exactly how long you will live. Around 75% of patients survive their cancer for one year or more after diagnosis. Almost 55%, so more than one out of two patients, will survive their cancer for four, five years or more after they are diagnosed. But when diagnosed at an earlier stage, more than nine in 10 patients with bladder cancer will survive their disease for one year or more, compared with more than one in three people when the disease is diagnosed at the latest sta later stage. So bladder cancer is a treatment offered by a team of healthcare professionals, a specialist urologist. A urologist would be a surgeon with some specialist interest in diagnosis and treatment of bladder cancer. A medical or radiation oncologist, a cancer specialist nurse, a psychosexual specialist, a radiologist and a pathologist. This specialist team through various disciplines approaches bladder cancer patients who are usually highly complex, providing care of consistently high quality. The important things to remember is that there needs to be a patient-centered approach and shared decision-making. For all these patients, high quality care means prompt diagnosis and evaluation, time, timely delivery of curative treatment, which often involves a combination of chemotherapy, surgery, and or radiotherapy, and excellent patient support to maximize quality of life in the face of treatment that is often either life-changing or in some occasions, unfortunately, life-limiting. 